What's up YouTube? It's Mark and Danny in the same place for the first time in a long time. We're heading out to the woods right now. We're gonna try and kill something. Who knows what? We'll see. <laughs> Jesus. The only thing I'm shooting is a deer. If a hog comes by, I'll give you guys some footage of it. And I ain't shooting a hog because that's gonna put us into midnight dealing with that. <laughs> I, I'm shooting a hog. Then you're dealing with it by yourself because <laughs> I need to get up at four in the morning to be out here tomorrow morning. I'll I'm shoot a here. hog. That's Thank fine. You. Did you see how fast I skinned out that hog the other day? Yeah. And that deer while you drank beer? Remember that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, of course, first day I get to get out in a while and it is pouring rain. Uh, so uh, we'll see how this goes. Go check out our merch store that should be up by now. Link's right there. It's dope. Buy a bikini. Dude, that is a big deer. And he didn't go 30 yards. Oh my God. <laughs> that was the first buck I've ever shot. Woo, what a rush. Money, that deer is dead. Tagged out, baby. <laughs> you shot one? Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. I saw him go what? down. All right, guys, so finally set up way too late. Had some trouble getting up here. Unfortunately, this tree doesn't have any good limbs to uh, hang my climbing rope from, so I had to throw it really high. And uh, it took a couple tries. It's about 6.30 and it just stopped raining, so I expect some deer to be on their feet right now, so I'm gonna go quiet. Hope for the best. already wait 
Was it a different doe? Okay. So you, you shot twice. You shot at two different does. Okay, cool. Sweet. I got a full lung of that. That went down to freaking pick her up and I was taking a breath. And it was... <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, Jesus. Okay. It does smell kind of bad. Dude. I'll give you that. I got a full lung of that. I wasn't ready for that. Yeah. It's, I mean, <sighs> what the hell? It's stinky. Are you done? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Come on, get it together. <laughs> we just gotta get one picture. <laughs> oh. Did you record all that? F yeah! <laughs> oh my Payback's god. Payback's a b. <laughs> okay. Alright, guys, so Dan shot a doe this morning. He's tagged out, so uh, I'm gonna go sit in his spot. Um, there's just been so much movement out there that it doesn't make sense for me to go anywhere else. So um, there's two really nice bucks that have been coming through that area pretty frequently. There's still two more does we see constantly. So there's a really good chance that, uh, that I'm gonna see something worth shooting at. So I'm excited to get out there. It just rained, a little squall came through. But it's supposed to be relatively clear for the rest of the afternoon. So um, I'm hoping that squall or these little scattered showers that are around might keep them on their feet. So I'm going to get ready. It's about 3.30. I think the minor uh, feed time or minor movement is supposed to start in about a half hour. So I'm going to hustle and get out there. Hopefully see some action. Let's get into it. All right. What's up, guys? So... Um, I'm in Danny's spot, and let me tell you, it looks way different than I had imagined it would. I've walked, I've walked around this spot so many times, you know, picking up all his deer, and this is a pretty darn cool spot. Anyway, it's like 4.30 right now. Had a bit of a fiasco coming up here. I uh, got all the way up here, got set up, and then realized that I'd put the bottom stick back on, but I wrapped it around my pull-up rope. So I couldn't get my bow up. I had to go all the way back down, free it up, pull the bow up. Anyway, I'm ready now. There's a good breeze, you know, good for me. Not necessarily good for hunting, but gotta stay cool up here. It is what it is. Um, hopefully something moves pretty soon. We shall see. Yes, yes, that was a good hit, that was a good hit.
Oh no. I don't know where the camera was pointing. This isn't my setup and my tether was kind of in the way and she was about to go behind some bushes and I got really nervous. So she gave me an opportunity let me tell you a little backstory, guys. I have not shot anything with my bow in a long, long time. I had sh shoulder surgery, and ever since I have been just dying to get back on the bow. I started out at 40 pounds. I couldn't draw anymore. It took me a year and a half to get my bow to draw something that would actually send an arrow at a speed I'd be okay with. I'm, a, I'm just under 60 pounds now. Been practicing and practicing, getting my shoulder stronger. So, even though that's just a doe, I'm freaking ecstatic right now. That, it's been a lot of work going into that. Oh my god. Oh, I feel like I'm gonna throw up. Holy crap. She's gotta be laying back there. I'm pretty sure the hit was good. She was quartered away. Hmm, actually. Now I think about it, I might have punched her right in the liver. Shit. Looked like she was bleeding pretty good though. I shot that doe with the thing. Yeah, but I'm not 100% on the hit. I know I, I know she's gonna die. But it looks, it looks like it was a little far back. She was quartering away. Um, yeah, but I saw when she was running away, um, I could see the exit wound. And, and it looked kind of far back. And, and she was quartered away, so that means the entry was even further back. Like, she was quartered pretty hard. Like, I, I'm 100% I'm sure I got liver. Um but uh i don't know if i got any lung anyway she's dead so i just don't i don't want to bump her so because then we're going to need a dog I, I got a feeling she probably if it is a gut shot she probably just went in there and laid down there's a bit of a rain shower coming my way <clears throat> it's prime time right now but i really don't want all the blood to get washed away so I'm walking over to check the arrow right now. Oh, I hope there's good blood. Maybe it does smell a little like guts. Let me 
me see if I can find some blood. All right, good morning, guys. Um, so it's like 5.30 in the morning right now. Um, I tried all night to, uh, to get somebody with a dog to come out and help me track this doe. Um, after reviewing the footage a lot, or we know that I hit guts, maybe a little bit of liver. Uh, I hit a little bit far to the right. Um, she's definitely dead by now. Uh, she, worst case scenario, she probably would have expired about three hours ago. Um, but uh, I haven't been able to find a dog and somebody is available to come in in a few hours. Um, but I figured I'd get a head start. I'm gonna head out there and at first light, I'm gonna take a look because a lot of times what happens, and this is important to remember, if you think you made a gut shot, uh, it's a really good idea to back out. Um, I, I checked the arrow, I walked you know, 20, 30 yards. I didn't notice any blood. It was pretty clear to me that I probably wasn't gonna find it uh, by myself and, and especially not, um, you know, right away because it was probably still alive so um because i backed out i probably did not bump the deer which means that it's very likely if nobody or nothing bothered her through the night that she just stayed bedded at the first bed that she found uh and and passed away right there so it's very possible that she's laying inside of 200 yards of where I shot her. I know which direction she went, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go real slow, and I'm gonna try to basically follow the path of least resistance, which is where I think she would have gone. Hopefully I stumble onto her. What I'm not gonna do is zigzag back and forth trying to find her and stink up the whole area, because if I don't find her and, and I do need to get a dog, uh, I don't wanna have the whole area stinking like me. So that's the plan. I'm going to head out there. We're going to see uh, if we can find this girl. Um, I just also want to point out that, you know, a lot of people are always asking us what to do once you harvest a deer. Um, and I think this is no exception. Um, a lot of people have this misconception that um, when you, if you don't find the deer right away in Florida because it's hot, uh, the meat goes bad really quickly and that's simply not true um, you know if you gut shoot a deer like I did uh, you inevitably are gonna lose some meat you're not gonna be able to harvest the ribs uh, or the inner loins um, that stuff just gets tainted by the uh, all those digestive juices that are released from the guts uh, so you're gonna lose those but uh, the the quarters and the back straps, the neck should still be good. Uh, it takes a long time for that stuff to uh, to go bad. The thing that throws people off is when you get there, uh, it smells bad because obviously she's she's gonna have been dropping pieces of poop out of her sides uh, all night. She's gonna smell bad regardless, um, and so people get put off by that smell and they often don't bother to clean the deer but the fact is I took her life so I owe it to her uh, to do the very best I can to harvest as much of that meat as possible and so I'm not I'm not gonna write that meat off until I have got it out of its skin and rinsed it off well um, and if if after a good rinse it's still smells rotten then unfortunately it will I won't be able to harvest it or I won't be able to eat it but if I get it rinsed off and it does not smell rotten then we're good to go I found her she went exactly where I thought she was gonna go she didn't go far I I didn't find any blood not a single drop and uh, all I found was that there was some grass laid flat in one spot, like something had walked through it. 
I followed that and I found a single track and I just followed the path of least resistance. And there she is. She's a little smelly, but uh, I think there's still some good meat on there. It looks like she died quick, so I'm happy about that. She died on the run. She only made it like 75 yards. Um, because I'm a curious bastard, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna try and do a little autopsy because I'm really curious. I don't know. But either way, she died quick and uh, she's, uh, she's going to provide meat, and that's what matters. Uh, a few of you might be wondering what that lump on her belly is. Um, we've seen this doe for years. She's had that lump. Um, I just poked it, and it's, it's actually hollow. My best guess is that somebody shot her a few years back and probably nicked her uh, like nicked her belly and then it just created like a huge keloid scar tissue or something like that because uh, it is connected to her body cavity all right so i'm almost done getting the meat off of her and here's the entry and uh i can feel all the bubbles in there uh and i can tell that i i got a piece of lung so she died pretty quickly um, and I can feel the liver back here. Definitely got some liver. That's mostly liver blood, but I, I got some lungs. So I think she went down pretty quick. All right guys, so I'm back at the house now. I've got the deer meat from the doe that I shot last night. Um, like I said, she laid out for about 12 hours before I found her. Um, <clears throat> And when I cleaned her out, the meat didn't have any smell to it. Um, but after a few hours, I noticed it was just like a little bit of a funk. Um, and I got a little iffy about it. So um, I talked to a couple professional wild game butchers. They all told me the same thing. They were like, 12 hours is nothing. The deer's fine. The meat should be fine. Uh, but they told me some tricks. Uh, that I could potentially use to uh, to put my mind at ease, um, which I didn't know about. So I'm going to show you what they told me to do, and I'm I'm going to sort of show you my process, and hopefully this will uh, prevent that funk. So basically, what they told me though is that it's pretty normal because uh, there's bacteria in. Uh, our bodies constantly so once we die that bacteria starts to proliferate and once we peel the skin off of a deer uh, you're giving that bacteria oxygen and they need three things they need like a, a host they need uh, something to consume they need uh, oxygen and they need water because otherwise they desiccate uh, so after I peel the skin off I give them oxygen then I rinse the meat off and I give them water uh, and then I put it into a cooler and of course because the meat uh, needs to cool down uh, it melts most of that ice and then they were just kind of sitting in like a pool of water for a couple of hours uh, and so basically by doing that you create this like perfect environment for bacteria to grow so it, it, it's apparently quite normal that uh, you know deer meat especially deer meat that's been sitting around overnight uh, is going to sort of develop a little bit of a funk. That's just bacteria starting to grow on the outside of that meat. Uh, it doesn't mean that the meat's rotten. Uh, it just means that it's like starting to break down. Um, it takes a long time before it gets to a point where, you know, us ingesting it is actually going to cause a problem. Uh, but anyway, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to kill the bacteria that's on the outside of this meat. Uh, and we're going to do this by uh, giving it a quick acid treatment. And the acid we're using is just vinegar. Um, 
So we're going to take it out. I'm going to trim up the meat. I'm going to take off any, you know, unwanted like membranes and stuff like that. Like, or if any of the pieces don't look quite right. Um, and then I'm going to mix up 50% uh, distilled white vinegar and 50% water. We're going to spray the meat down. We're going to let it sit for a little bit and then we're going to pat it dry. And then I'm going to store it in the driest situation that I can uh, so that, again, there's no water for that bacteria to grow in. All right, so I've got a big cooler here. I don't know how many quarts it is, but uh, I basically laid some, uh, uh, I've got 60 pounds of ice in here. Um, and then this cooler, and it, this isn't going to work on all coolers, but this cooler has uh, like these little slanted edges here. So what I did is I cut a little piece of wood and I have this fan that's like a clip on fan. So I clip that onto that piece of wood and I can hang it right in there. Um, and that's going to uh, keep air circulating throughout here. And then I'm going to lay that meat on here so that the top of it can dry. It's going to have good air circulation. And then I'll, uh, I'll flip the meat every few hours so that both sides can dry. And hopefully that's going to stop that bacterial growth. Um, yeah. And uh, using this contraption, I will basically dry age uh, the meat for a few days. I figure uh, if the meat has gone bad after a few days of dry aging, uh, it's going to smell terrible. So uh, if it sm still smells good in a few days, I'd say we're good to go. And I'll butcher it up and put it in the freezer. So, so here we have one of the hind quarters. Uh, I just blotted it dry just with paper towels. And here I've got my half uh, distilled white vinegar and uh, water. So I'm just going to give it a good spray down. Get it nice and wet. And this stuff, because it has a low pH, it's basically acidic. And that's going to kill the bacteria. So I'm just going to let that sit for five minutes. Uh, and then I'm going to dab it, dry it, and then it's going to go into the cooler. You know what? I was about to spray this one down. But just to make this an experiment, how about I don't spray this one down and I just dry age it. Uh, that way we can test whether the vinegar is actually doing anything. That's what we're going to do. Right, so there we have basically a whole deer and uh, we're going to let this thing go for a while and uh, I guess we'll see if it stinks later. Alright guys, so it's been a couple of days now. Um, that little bit of funk that, that the meat had has, uh, has gone away now it's been cold and dry for uh, for a little while now. Uh, so, and, and that's for both the ones that I treated with vinegar and also the ones uh, that I didn't treat. So I think uh, what I've learned from this is that the deer stays out till the next morning as long as it's been in a relatively cool place. Uh, that meat's still gonna be good. You just gotta make sure you take care of it. So the way to do that is get it cold as fast as, fast as possible. Um, and then as soon as you have the chance, get it dry uh, and keep it cold for the entire time. Uh, and any bacteria that starts to grow on the outside of that meat will uh, stop growing um, and you'll be able to eat that meat just fine. So I'm going to butcher it up. Um, hopefully you guys find that helpful. If you find yourself in a similar situation as this, let's say you gut shoot a deer, you can't find it. Uh, if you need help finding it, go check out the Facebook group, uh, the Florida Blood Trailing Network. There's a bunch of great trackers in every county of Florida. Uh, they'll come out for free, track your deer for you. Just give them a tip. Uh, they do it for free, but obviously you should cover like their gas and just give them some money for their time and the effort. Uh, but they'll help you find your deer. And even if it takes a little while to find it, even in this Florida heat, uh, that deer meat's still gonna be good. Uh, so don't let those deer go to waste. We'll catch you guys in the next episode.